Hey, so one of my favorite things to do on this channel is to bust myths. Um, today I'm going to talk about the third biggest myth that I've ever encountered. Um, you've probably heard of the first two. The first uh, biggest myth, myth ever perpetuated on golfers is the one that says you got to keep your head down or keep your eye on the ball. Um, don't lift up. And the number two biggest myth ever perpetuated is the idea of trying to intentionally hold lag or delay, unconscious, uh, consciously delay the uncocking of the wrists. So something like this, you're going to try to hold this angle um, in your golf swing. Now that's a, a myth that I've been busting on this channel for a while now. I've left links to uh, my, those videos down in the description. And the number three myth I'm going to cover today in this video, and that has to do with the action of the right wrist as you're going through impact. So if you want to see the third biggest myth ever perpetuated on golfers, then stay tuned because I'm going to talk about it right after this. <music> Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, but also be longer and straighter all the way to the green, even on those long par threes where accuracy matters more than distance even. So hey, if you're on the same journey, um, I would invite you to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification, uh, like this video at the end if you liked it, and leave a comment down below. All right, so today we're talking about what I would describe as the third biggest myth ever perpetuated, and that has to do with the action of the right wrist moving through impact, which a lot of people will describe as, if, the, if you don't do it right, a lot of golfers will describe it as getting flippy. So getting flippy would be described often as making the right wrist go from dorsiflexion or pin back like this into what we would call palmer flexion and end up looking like this with no lean on the shaft or even a backwards lean on the shaft in a slight palmer flexion. Of course, you've added kind of scoopy spin loft to this and you would wreck your angle of attack, hit a lot of shots either fat or you might hit them with no forward lean. You might hit them very high and therefore very short and not compress the ball properly. I've got a five iron, but if I come into the ball with my wrist in this position, I am presenting seven iron loft at the ball. And therefore, because I have more spin loft that I'm striking the ball with, I'm going to hit uh, for less compression. All right, so first let's define terms because what a lot of people call flappy, I don't actually call that, or flip, flippy, I don't actually call that a flip, I call it a flap, and I'm reserving the term flip for something else, and that is when the wrist actually causes the club shaft to spin about itself this way, which of course would radically open and close the face without advancing the club head around its arc. So it's not something we would like to use as our primary squaring force because of the high variability of how it angles the club face. So I like to call that flipping. So some, for example, someone who's coming into impact early extending with the handle going high right, the club face is going to be very open coming into impact and you would have to really flip the toe over the heel and that would introduce a lot of potential for both um, hooking and a two-way miss, the high right and the quick hook. Um, I like to reserve um, the, the term flip for that motion and I like to call what traditionally people have accused me of being flippy, which to me is a flap of the wrist or flapping like this. And so, like I said, I've been accused of teaching a massive flip. It's really interesting. My favorite comment so far, favorite of all time is this one where it says, um, <laughs> now seating flip, Mr. Flippy McFlipburger party of two. <laughs> That's one of my uh, critics who suggests 
that I am teaching a massive flip. Well, I've got news for you, and this is where the myth gets busted, that just about every great player on the planet is extremely flippy. It's the only way you're going to get the club out, uh, the ball out there with any power at all is to be extremely flippy. There are very few exceptions, and we're going to talk about them. So the idea that tour golfers or really good golfers are not doing a flippy move is just crazy. We've got video evidence of all kinds of good golfers here. There, let's take a look at probably the number one golfer in the world right now at this moment, Dustin Johnson, and take a look at some of these photos of him at the right moment in the swing. You can see that he has gone freely into palm reflection like this. So again, that's when the hand has passed the wrist and the club shaft is passing the handle like this. You can clearly see in these photos that he is freely flapping the wrist. Again, what people would say, flippy. Well, he's about as flippy as they get. Let's take a couple look at a, a look at a couple other examples. Here's uh, Masters champion Fred Couples, Hall of Famer Fred Couples, one of the flippiest golfers in history. You can see how, again, he is flapping that wrist. He's got it in dorsiflexion here, halfway down, and quickly, from about the slot, he is imposing a torque on the handle that is causing this action to happen. And out here, he is going into the flippiest look you've ever seen. A third great example, another Masters champion and Hall of Famer, is Vijay Singh. So, <laughs> these are some decent golfers over the years, right? Look at the pictures of Vijay as he flaps through, or he's about to flip. He's so flippy that his hand is almost coming off the club. It's unbelievable. He might have the all-time uh, flippy record. And yet these guys had no problem compressing the ball, taking divots, <laughs> hitting the ball for distance. Uh, so in other words, every good player just about is doing this. 100% of players are doing this at some point. They are getting flippy, but some of them are either retarding it or just delaying it. For example, the big example that a lot of people will point to um, in their criticism of me is, well, they would point to Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan was definitely later in his career holding this angle a little bit longer and even possibly retarding that flap action from happening. So you might have seen him looking like this in his follow through, still in slight dorsiflexion on some of his shots, more predominantly his iron shots. Uh, if you look at some of his driver swings, his driver finishes, you will definitely could catch him on occasion going into more of a palm reflection or a flippy style, but of course it's way out here where it belongs in the follow through. Um, another example of this is like a Brooks Kepka, and Brooks Kepka um, does two things. Number one, he definitely slightly delays this flapping motion, but he also does, interestingly, a little bit of a a chicken wingy elbow pull as he come in, comes into the ball, and that also serves the same purpose, which is to end up with more forward lean than normal. And of course, you'll end up with a tendency to leave the club face open relative to its path. And so, in this way, retarding or delaying this flippy move would be a good way or a viable way, obviously, because a couple of Hall of Famers, well, Brooks Kepka will be in the Hall of Fame someday, and Hogan, one of the four best of all time. Um, it is their way of hitting the ball both lower and having a fade pattern. So if you are looking to hit the ball lower, fade the ball instead of hooking the ball, well, it's not my preferred way of doing it, but it is definitely a viable way of doing it. Okay, so how is it that I can be, and I can advocate being as flippy as you can possibly get, 
and not have it culminate in looking flippy at impact, something like this. You see, it would be like you'd say, hey, you casted it, you got flippy at the bottom, like that. You see, I, I thinned that one, almost topped it. Of course, if I go a little deeper, I hit that one super duper fat. So you'd say, well, Steve, you're advocating being flippy. Um, how is it not turning into a flip? Well, this is because of where the location and the intention of this snap of the wrist, so this action here, that's going to severely accelerate the club for distance, but it all depends on where it's happening. So we don't want it happening back here, and the only way you could possibly make that happen is if you didn't have enough shift and turn prior to the flapping of the wrist or simultaneously to get the flap out here. Okay, now I've got the swoosh, um, the speed whoosh again, one of my favorite tools for a lot of different exercises. In this case, I'm gonna show you how you can, and this is gonna absolutely bust our third myth here. When you watch this in slow-mo, you'll see what I'm talking about, but you'll see that I can be as flippy as I want, but as long as I am shifting turning and I am intending on putting the swoosh at least 30 inches out in front of the ball, well then you're gonna see this massive forward lean, um, a illusion that I am holding the angle when I'm actually trying to plow that wrist through in reality, but you're gonna see it impact how I have the look of a Hogan or any other great golfer out there as they're going into the ball. So let me do a full swing, then we'll break it down in slow-mo and look at it. So you can see from that slow-mo, it was really uh, fascinating actually how I am at impact. Yes, I look like I have an enormous amount of forward lean and it looks like I'm retaining wrist cock, but this is just an illusion. In reality, I'm actually, you know, I am flapping or flipping the hell out of that um, club head and ending up swooshing out here. So that's the point at which the right wrist is actually flapping through. So what's the difference? It's my intention to flip or flap way out in front of the ball, and it's my body action shifting and turning simultaneously as I'm trying to plow that right wrist through into this position. Now, why other <laughs> golf instructors, they wanna make the motion of a golf swing so unique or complicated. It's not this complicated. There's so much precedent in other sports motions to what we would like to do with a golf swing. Let's take a look at one that is a um, uh, baseball pitcher. Let's take a look at the, a baseball pitcher at the key moment. Absolutely, he is as flippy as you could possibly be. His wrist, as his elbow has straightened, he is snapping the wrist down like this. Well, why doesn't he uh, throw it straight into the ground or too soon? Well, it's because he's got the stepping, planting, and turning going on, so everything is releasing at the right time. But you're never going to see a major league pitcher ever who will be holding on to this dorsiflexed wrist like this It'd be like a shot put. He would never reach home plate, and certainly he would never have enough velocity on his fastball to ever make it past middle school or high school level 
baseball. Let's take a, take a look at another great example, and that's shooting free throws. So here I've put a video up of a couple of the, probably the greatest free throw shooters in the history of basketball. Um, they're kind of having a little shoot off here, and you probably recognize them. Uh, one's a current, um, probably one of the best five players in basketball, and the other is one of the greatest coaches in basketball. And they're having a little contest here, but you can see quite clearly the prominence of snapping the wrist from dorsiflexion to palmar flexion, taking it through its full range of motion, they're not only using this to create enough power to get the ball above the rim. You see, without snapping, just with the legs and the torso and the arm lift alone, without that wrist snap, they would simply never get the ball above the rim. Without that key wrist action, you'd be looking at more of a shot put or a, a push action just all for the uh, the sake of trying to hold a wrist angle i mean what it makes no sense at all so when you hear people saying that you need to take this right wrist angle and try to preserve it all the way to impact the problem with that is that it insinuates that you're going to keep the muscles on the back of the wrist that let's see if I, if I go against gravity and I flex the hand up like this or go take it, it's called extension or dorsiflexion. See, I've got to contract these muscles on the back of the forearm here to keep it against gravity. So if I'm coming in impact and I'm, I think that I am going to keep these wrist uh, muscles contracted, well, that's not how it's going to work. That's not what's happening in a good golf swing. If you would like to try to do this, well, you're always going to get outdriven. You're going to hit it low and you're probably going to slice the ball. Unless, of course, I see this teaching a lot where I, I, I just, I'd shudder. I, I would run away from this teaching if I were you, where you're trying to hold, hold, hold. Now you see how the club face, <laughs> the club face is going to be wide open. There's that angle I'm trying to hold. There's even gadgets out there that try to keep you in this angle. It is a photograph. You are falling, being duped, falling prey to the look of a photograph. You are not seeing the full picture, the forces and torques that the wrist is pushing into the grip of the club and when. That is the truth. The truth is that that's happening. It's ramping up from about here in the, the downswing. Right about the slot is where this push action to start doing this starts really ramping up at a fast crescendo and we're just happening to time you see right here and snap it or get very flippy out here so don't get fooled by the photograph don't try to pers purposely hold you'll see what happens other instructors are teaching hold Look how open that face is. I'm gonna shank this or slice it right off the planet unless I go their second magic move, which also makes me shudder, is to turn the knuckles down like this. So, you know, something like that. And sure, you're gonna get a hell of a, a ton of forward lean doing it that way. And if I, by God, if I had to hit a three foot high shot um, off the deck under a tree or something, I might possibly use a strategy with my wrists like that, but you're never going to get it up there in the air high to stop it on a green, and you're never going to get the ball out there for any uh, appreciable distance either. If you think you're doing this, I know I'm going to get the comments already. If you, uh, Someone's going to say, well, I do this and I hit the ball 300 yards. I guarantee you, you're not doing this. I guarantee you're not actually holding the wrist angle. You're trying to plow it right through. It's just happening out here. All right, so hopefully from this video, you've learned the difference in terminology. I like to change um, and call the flip, I like to call that a flap instead. So we're talking about different actions here of the wrist, this to this, which you can see propels the club very nicely a long way around the arc almost a full 180 degrees well watch this keeps the face of the club it's actually kind of reverse rolls it it's kind of close to the arc here and then it's kind of open to the arc there so very little club face rotation through the ball so 
you know, it's two things we really like. It's a motion that adds speed because it's propelling the club forward, and it's also an action that does not cause the club face uh, variability to get bigger. In fact, it might even lead to it club face variability not having to be as high, and that's even good, really good for hitting straighter shots. So that, that meets both criteria of power and accuracy in that motion where this motion or this motion or just this motion, they don't meet. So I want to be very flippy in summary, as flippy as possible. We just have to make sure that the flip is occurring about 30 inches past the ball, not because we're delaying it intentionally, but because we're doing it simultaneously with a good healthy pivot, shifting, turning. And the best exercise to do that is to make sure that you are just snapping and whooshing about 30 inches out in front of the ball. It's the best exercise to do it. That's gonna give you um, a lot of club head speed and acceleration of the hands. While meanwhile, you'll be timing impact to where you're getting just the right amount of forward lean, which is gonna give you the right amount of compression, the right divot action, all that good stuff. So hey, I'm gonna go back to working on being as flippy as possible. And, um, but thanks again for watching my channel. Thanks again to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us today. And hey, if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take care. Oh,